Welcome to the first CI Compass webinar. CI Compass is an NSF Cyber Infrastructure Center of Excellence for navigating the major facilities data. My name is Eva Dillman. I'm a research professor in the Computer Science Department at the University of Southern California. I am also a research director at the USC Information Sciences Institute and the PI of CI Compass. CI Compass is a collaboration between USC, Indiana University, Notre Dame, the University of Utah, Texas Tech, and Renzi. Welcome. As many of you know, the NSF largest faci large facilities are the largest investments in science and engineering that NSF makes. Some of these facilities include the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, the Academic Research Fleet, which with vessels such as research vessel Sequiliac and uh, laboratories such as the MATLAB. NSF's blueprint for the National Cyber Infrastructure Ecosystem for Science and Engineering in the 21st century recognized that the NSF large facilities are increasingly dependent on advanced cyber infrastructure. Current and planned large facilities are producing increasing volumes of data, data products resulting in growing cyber infrastructure requirements, including computational, networking, data management, and processing requirements and associated expertise. NSF laid large, also known as major facilities, that deliver data, modeling, computational, and physical capabilities to the broader research and engineering community, students, educators, and the public. They're highly diverse, complex, and heterogeneous. Some of the other examples of the major facilities are ISCU, which captures neutrinos in the South Pole, Iris, which have deployments of, of instruments that capture the seismic activity that we are observing, NEON, which has various deployments within the United States, both terrestrial and aquatic, but captures data about the systems. And CMS, for example, that, uh, which is a high energy physics experiment, captures the smaller part of, smallest particles in our universe and helps us understand how we got here. Another example is OI, the Ocean Observatory Initiative, which captures data that helps us understand our oceans. You can see these uh, different facilities are very diverse. The different the type of data that they capture, the scientific instruments that they use, uh, the data processing and analysis that they perform, and also the policies and methods for data sharing and use. One thing that they have in common is that they rely on very complex cyber infrastructure to transform the raw data into more interoperable and information and integration ready products that can be visualized, disseminated, and transformed into insights. The mission of CI Compass is to serve these large facilities. CI Compass provides expertise and active support to cyber infrastructure practitioners at NSF major facilities in order to accelerate the data lifecycle and ensure the integrity and effectiveness of the cyber infrastructure upon which research and discovery depend. Before I go into details about CI Compass, I wanted to let you know how did we get here. So in 2017, NSF funded a workshop on cyber infrastructure for large facilities. There were a number of discussions within the community that included practitioners and um, from the broader CI ecosystem and CI practitioners facilities. There were a number of recommendations that were made uh, during that workshop, and I would like to highlight two of them. One establish a center of excellence following the model of what is now known as trusted CI for providing expertise and CI technologies and effective practices related to large-scale facilities as they conceptualize, start up, and operate. Another recommendation was to foster the creation of facility CI of a, of a facility CI community and establish mechanisms and resources to enable the community to collaborate and share. Given these recommendations, uh, my team and I have uh, developed a proposal and submitted it to NSF to build a cyber infrastructure center of excellence. This proposal was funded as a pilot 
And its goal is to develop a model and a plan for a cyber infrastructure center of excellence that will serve the major facilities. We wanted this center to be dedicated to the enhancement of CI for science. We want it to be a platform for knowledge sharing and community building. We also wanted it to be a forum for discussions about cyber infrastructure sustain sustainability and workforce development and training. Finally, we wanted to be a key partner for the establishment and improvement of large-scale projects with advanced cyber infrastructure architectural designs. We were funded for three years, and during the three years of our project, we conducted a number of deep engagements with selected major facilities, and we also integrated a number of major facilities CI practitioners. In particular, we had deep engagements with NEON, NEON and NANCAR, Sage Engage, Arecibo, and OI. We developed this model of deep engagements. We identified the topic or topics that are important but yet not fully solved by a major facility or two major facilities as was the case in, sometimes. We formed working groups that included both major facilities and CICOE pilot personnel to address these issues. As part of this engagement, we wanted to understand the needs of the major facilities in a particular area, learn about how the cyber infrastructure was operated and how it was designed, and provide expertise where it was needed, and also distill best practice where we found things that were applicable more broadly, and then disseminate this knowledge to the community. We as part of our work, we conducted focus discussion. We had a mix of in-person and virtual uh, meetings. So that was back in the pre-COVID days. Uh, we also uh, developed a number of work products. <clears throat> in particular, we had the documents and papers that were uh, jointly co-offered uh, by the MFs and CICOE pilot personnel. We developed proof of concepts, uh, schema implementations, and and I'll give some concrete examples later on in my talk. At the end of our engagements, we also evaluated how well the engagement went and what were its outcomes. Based on these deep, deep engagements and interviews that we conducted, we developed a model of a data life, life cycle within a major facility. If we look conceptually at this model, it, can start, it starts off with data captured with sensors. So this could be the sensors uh, that NEON has deployed. It could be the large instruments uh, that CMS uh, has in place. And then from there, there's some initial data processing uh, at the edge, so near the site where the instrument is located. From there, the data is sent to, to a data center where other processing is being done. So the central processing where data is further annotated, transformed into to derived data products and uh, other uh, cleaned and so forth. Uh, based on this uh, central processing, the data is then uh, stored, curated and archived. So it can be disseminated, visualized and data access is provided to scientists, educators, students, and the public. And there are also some cross-cutting elements uh, that come in into the uh, data life cycle, uh, such as data movement across the various stages, uh, issues of fair data, where the data needs to be annotated properly uh, at the, from the time that it's captured to the time that it's disseminated, and identity management that allows access, uh, appropriate access to, to the data but also it allows facilities to track how the data is used. Also, we noticed that the model is not always that straightforward. Uh, sometimes the scientists provide data to the major facility at different points in time. There might be also cycles within the facilities. And some of the facilities also um, do simulations that start at the processing stages in the data life cycle. Finally, uh, although we talk about central processing, uh, we do recognize that the number of facilities are, do, are using not the main data center, but distributed facilities such as the Open Science Grid and PATH to do missions. Based on this data model, we wrote a blueprint for a cyber infrastructure center of excellence that would serve in NSF major facilities. And we published it via archive and in Zenodo, and it is available at this URL. 
uh, we also developed a proposal uh, and submitted a proposal to NSF that would continue the work of deep engagement with the NSF major facilities and also broker connections with, between the CI practitioners within the facilities, across the facilities, and the broader NSF CI ecosystem. We would also disseminate knowledge and findings in CI workshops and working groups to address various issues that are related to the NSF major facilities life cycle. In order to achieve uh, these goals, we put together a team that was already part of um, CICOE pilot. The team has deep expertise in the areas critical to the major facilities data life cycle, such as data management, data processing, visualization, identity management, systems, and infrastructure. We also have experience in the management of CI projects from the conceptualization phases to the design and to its broader adoption. We are highly collaborative and we have a strong history of working together uh, also outside of the CIE path. And we also have connections with many diverse communities, for example, in astronomy, earth science and physics, and we bring these connections to bear in, in our work. As far as our team that includes individuals from USC, Indiana University, University of Notre Dame, University of Utah, Texas Tech and Renzi, we developed uh, through various brainstorm sessions, we agreed on a core set of values that we would operate by in our new CI Compass project. Among them, are the recognition that we are purpose driven. Uh, we strive for scientific excellence. We want to be transparent in our activities. We want to be inclusive and agile. Bottom line is that our team is dedicated to the advancement of CI for science, engineering, and education, and that brings us together into the CI Compass project. Uh, to introduce you a little bit more to our team at USC, we have um, expertise in automation, resource management, workflows, and project management. At Renzi, with Annie Van Mandal as co PI, we have expertise in resource management, networking, cloud science and, and evaluation, project evaluation in particular. At the University of Notre Dame, we, with COPI Yarek Nabrzyski, we have expertise in workforce development, sensors, operations, semantic technologies, and communication and outreach. At University of Utah, with Valerie Pascucci as COPI, we have expertise in data management, visualization, clouds, and large-scale CI deployments. Andrew Murillo, co-PI from Indiana University, brings expertise in data archiving. And Kurt Key from Texas Tech University brings expertise in communication and organization science. Our overall strategy is to recognize the expertise, experience, and mission focus of major facilities. We want to contribute knowledge and expertise that's related to the major facilities data lifecycle. And we want to enhance our overall NSFCI ecosystem. We build expertise and not software. Although we may develop proof of concepts, we do not expect our software to be directly ingested into the major facilities data lifecycle. And it's really up to the major facilities to adopt the technologies that they choose. We build on existing knowledge, tools, and community efforts, and we want to avoid any duplication. Rather, we seek to provide added value. In order to leverage community expertise, we also build partnerships with various major NSF projects to provide the expertise to the major facilities. In particular, we partnered with Trusted CI in the area of cybersecurity, with Open Science Grid and Path in the area of data and workload management, with the Engagement and Performance Operations Center, EPOC, in the area of network utilization, with Research Computing and Data Nexus, in CI workforce development. This is a new CI CICOE pilot funded by NSF with Dana Bronson as PI. And we're also partnering with two test beds, Chameleon, which is a cloud and edge to cloud experimentation and testing facility, and Fabric, which is focuses on the next generation networks. And we're looking at working with them in the area of experimentation and testing. We also want to share our knowledge, uh, lessons learned and best practices with major facilities, with partners and the CI community. 
In addition to our partners, we also seek advice from uh, our advisory committee, which includes members from the major facilities such as LIGO and WARLAB and DesignSafe. We also have members of other contributors to the NSF CI ecosystem uh, from projects such as the Open Science Grid and PAP, Trusted CI, SGCI, and Boring Powers provides us expertise and a point of view of a user of major facilities data. Our CI Compass activities uh, include the deep engagements that I already described to you. Uh, we also form topical working groups which we piloted during the CI series pilot projects. We'll also host workshops around cyber infrastructure for major facilities and other topical workshops. We are starting a new program in student internships. And we also have other activities such as webinars like this one that you're attending today. Uh, we'll be conducting community surveys and generating technical reports. And of course, we also have our internal planning and project management activities. I already talked about our deep engagements and, and how they work. Um, I'll talk a little bit more now about the topical working groups and the community building efforts. In our topical working groups, we identify a topic that is important to a number of major facilities. And then we facilitate discussions, sessions at conferences. We collect and share experiences and distill best practices. And this is open to members of major facilities and other uh, NSF projects. Uh, we also have uh, community building efforts where we share knowledge, we build connections. As part of these efforts, we host community workshops as just the cyber infrastructure for major facilities and training events that are complementary to other activities that are happening in the community. Uh, we also identify related effort and efforts and then collect information and disseminate, it, uh, disseminate information about the broad community activities and, and other training opportunities that are already available. To give you an example of what kind of services we provide in our deep engagements in the area of a data life cycle, we, uh, for example, evaluate um, the data life cycle plans, and we help design new solutions, we develop proof of concepts, we can assess applicability or performance of existing solutions and help leverage these solutions. Some example services that are present related to the CI data lifecycle are, are shown on the slide. So for example, in the data capture, we can discuss sensor data annotations, help apply community sensor data models to the major facilities data, explore various messaging systems, and so forth. In the area of central processing, we can help leverage existing test bits to evaluate new software stacks and configurations during the time that the major facilities are designing and enhancing the CI solutions. In terms of data access, dissemination, virtualization, we can assist in designing data visualization solutions to so help you choose tools, formats, or, or develop proof of concept to show some capabilities so that it's easier to discover and access the data. Finally, in the area of uh, another example, in the area of identity management, we can assist in developing identity management solutions for managing user access to the data and also to help uh, gather the data usage uh, so that it can be reported to NSF and internally as well. So uh, I'll go now for some of the example of engagements that we've done in the past. So we, in 2018 and 2019, we engaged uh, with NEON. The goal, this was our first engagement. And so the goal for us was really to learn as much as we can about the major facilities, the operations, the enhancements that they're planning. We wanted to also understand how a CICOE can help major facilities such as uh, NEON. And this was uh, the goal of it ultimately was to inform the model of uh, a CICOE and CI Compass that you see today. On the technical level, uh, we looked at addressing issues related to sensor data collection and processing. We helped NEON with uh, data annotation and discovery, so applying community standards uh, to the data and also taking the challenges that NEON was seeing in the area of data annotation and discovery to the community so that the community could evolve as well. Uh, we also uh, 
contributed in the area of uh, visualization of area observation data and uh, in a minute. And we have them design an IDM solution that fits their needs. We also learned uh, about the data lifecycle and the CI that supports it, in particular in the area of uh, data processing. So NEON uh, was on the forefront of using uh, technologies such as Airflow and Pachyderm for the data processing. So for us, it was a learning experience. And with our discussions with, with NEON, we were able to also help them affirm that their strategies uh, were appropriate for their and uh, would be successful for their uh, data processing. And so the products of these engagements were software prototypes, um, documents. We also had presentations, joint presentations at AGU. We uh, generated various videos, uh, publications, and uh, we also had schema designs. Uh, so this is an example of uh, what was achieved during this engagement. So this was um, work led by Steve Petrusa on our side. Originally, if you looked at, at the Neon data portal, you were able to retrieve the data based on, on file lists, or you could use an API to, to, to seek the data uh, for large data sets, or even mail in a high drive to, hard drive to get the data. Afterwards, with uh, Steve's uh, solution, you could uh, take the uh, view of the data within the NEON portal in a visual way. Uh, you could select a particular uh, resolution that you wanted the data to uh, access at, and then you could uh, download um, the data based on this visual exploration. Example uh, of an engagement was with uh, NEON and ANCAR. This engagement started in, in 2020 and is still going on. NEON and NCAR wanted to combine the NEON ecosystem data with the NCAR atmospheric and land modeling capabilities and thus inspire new discoveries with this integrated information. On the right, you see a prototype uh, data set that's, uh, on the collaborative, uh, that's available on the collaborative portal. It shows the NEON data collected at the Abbey Road uh, site, NEON site. So in red, you, you see the data uh, coming off of these uh, towers that measure the latent heat flux um, at that location. And then in dark blue, you see the modeling uh, coming from the CLM model uh, from uh, NCAR. And the hope is that uh, scientists will use this data to uh, perform new discoveries. The goal of this project, however, was to use cloud technologies to enable this data modeling like wide access to, to the models and to the data. So it, CI CIE Pilot uh, and now CI Compass have consulted on cloud technologies, including containers. We helped with testing, and we also consulted on fair data and visualization. On the other side, we also learned about the management challenges of making these very complex computational models available to the community. Another example of engagement was with uh, Sage and Gage, and again, it started in 2020, is still ongoing. So the seismological facilities for advancement of geoscience and the geodetic facility for the advancement of geoscience wanted to build a common cloud platform and see how big it can support the dissemination of geodetic and seismic data to their communities. In order to be able to uh, support that, we had initial discussions and presentations about the goals of our project. And then we've, at that time, we found out that uh, Sage and Gage already had a very detailed work plan of how to build this prototype platform, this cloud, common cloud platform. And they already had not only a plan, but also they already had a, a number of working groups that were working within uh, this context to uh, make CCP a reality. So on our end, uh, what was different for us then is that we uh, became embedded in these ex existing working groups who provided our uh, expertise in, the area, in various areas. And we participated in the groups on um, data flows and use cases, con ops, high level requirement gathering, and, and platform design. And these groups are changing over time, and our contributions uh, evolve as well. 
we um, on our side we gained a lot of knowledge uh, from a large-scale extremely complex real-time system on how, whatever challenges uh, in managing such a system whatever conditions on putting the system uh, in the cloud and we contributed to, to a number of documents uh, with um, in some cases doing platform design schematics um, making suggestions about use cases, reviewing the documents and so forth. The products of this engagement were both internal and public documents, uh, presentations and videos. So to, to give a, a, an example of this, so Yarek Nabriski from Notre Dame led the a team that reviewed the cost risk benefit analysis of moving to and he presented uh, the group's finding at the Sage Engage uh, community workshop uh, a few, couple of months ago, or last month. And the group is finalizing an internal document uh, talking about the analysis that they did in terms of whatever options for uh, cloud providers for CCP. So this document is internal. However, the CI Compass will take this document uh, and distill the key points to be able to uh, to share the general findings uh, uh, online. And I also want to, uh, to mention that this was a collaboration with Internet2 that enabled us to connect with various um, commercial cloud providers. Another example, and this one is also interesting in that it brought a number of participants from the NSF CI community together to work with Arecibo uh, to safeguard their data. Originally, when we started working with Arecibo in 2020, our goal was to help them with data dissemination and cloud uh, data processing considerations. So looking at metadata analysis, how to organize the data, whatever technologies that are available for the repository, um, and how to support data processing in the cloud. Uh, however, after we started working with Arecibo, uh, the instrument was experiencing, experiencing failures that could put them in the data center. So it became critical to move the data uh, to a safe location. At that time, when the effort uh, came together with um, Arecibo, but also including University of Central Florida, TAC, University of Rico, uh, EPOC, Globus, and CICU Pallet, to move this data uh, to the TAC uh, systems. So this was a very nice example of an SF funded community working together to, to move the data and to safeguard it. And this effort is still ongoing. Uh, additionally, uh, we, uh, we CICOE pilot connected our CBO with the International Virtual Observatory uh, to help develop, uh, to help our CIPA develop solutions based on community standards. And in particular, Julio Alvarado Negron, who is the Big Data Program Manager, uh, did a presentation at the IVOA Interoperability Meeting in 2021, uh, back, back in, in May. And he discussed some of the issues that were important uh, to our CIPA and how the community could be involved in, uh, in that effort. And so this is still ongoing. So I mentioned the deep engagements. Uh, another area of activity for us is uh, organizing topical working groups. So there are two active working groups right now, one are identity management, and this is in collaboration with Trusted CI. The goal of this group is to disseminate information about IDM. So they have monthly meetings with various speakers uh, both in, in MF speakers, but also from the community. So talk, uh, we had the speakers talking about CI logon, for example. Uh, they uh, primarily focus on, on um, federated identity management and also issues of identifying data usage uh, and enabling reporting. Another working group we have going on is the Cloud Infrastructure Working Group. Uh, their goal is to, to understand the current practices for clouds that are used by MFs. Also to research alternative solutions and keep up to date with emerging cloud technologies. So there's a lot of uh, knowledge sharing uh, going on right now and experience sharing. And also they, the group wants to develop a general set of best practices, practices that can inform the major facilities in the future. 
Um, and so I talked about deep engagements, I talked about uh, topical working groups. Uh, finally, we have a, a community building, a community workshops. Uh, last year in the summer, we organized a cyber infrastructure, cyber security workshop in collaboration with Research SOC. And they addressed a number of issues uh, such as with data visualization, cloud migration, con ops, fed data, and others. Uh, and uh, in June of this year, the CICOE pilot and CI for Resilience, um, a, a, a sister project, uh, organized a workshop on creating a thriving uh, workplace. And so we, we put the, the materials from this workshop uh, online as well. And uh, recently also uh, we published a report from the workshop, which is available um, on the website and through also on uh, Senado. Uh, in addition to these existing activities, we are also uh, piloting. So first of all, we want to capitalize on the current engagements and develop lessons learned and other community products. So you should um, expect to see more technical reports uh, one of them would be conducting cloud risk cost benefit analysis, but others as well. Uh, we also continue, we'll continue topical uh, webinars. So we'll talk about fair data and cloud migration consideration. We also will be soliciting new, new engagements. So um, although we have a number of engagements going on right now, we'll expect a call for engagements to come out in spring of 2022. So if uh, you're a major facilities and you need advice or, or want to collaborate with us um, in the areas of a major facilities data lifecycle, um, look out for this call. Um, also in uh, February of next year, we are planning a CI for major facilities workshop. It will be a hybrid event, most likely um, in Los Angeles. And so we, we still have to firm up the dates, but it would probably second half of February, uh, very beginning of March. And we're also soliciting uh, topics and volunteers. So if you have topics that you want to discuss at the, the event, or if you want to uh, give a talk or run a panel or do something else, volunteer in any case, uh, please uh, fill out this questionnaire at tinyurl.com ci-compass-mfci-2022. Uh, this link is also available from our website, but we would love to hear from you. And we have, uh, we also piloting um, other activities such as the student internship program. So the goal of this program is to broaden student participation in CI research, development, deployment, and operations. Um, our student interns will be able to learn about um, cyber infrastructure and major facilities in general and what makes work there in fun. They'll be able to develop uh, skill sets important to work of major facilities and also engage with major facilities for both on site and virtual uh, internship programs. In the first year, we Putting a framework for this program. So we develop protocols, procedures, and guidelines, including how we're going to recruit students, uh, what the application will look like, uh, how the students are selected. We need to develop ways of onboarding and training the students. And uh, we also uh, are developing various activities that will first start off within CI Compass and also within uh, the MFs. Uh, our plan for this year is to, to have four students that will start off working with CI Compass and, and then uh, hopefully engage with uh, our major facilities partners. We are also soliciting uh, project ideas. So if you want a CI Compass student to work with you or work on a program that's important, please fill out uh, that, um, uh, that, that uh, URL at ci compass the students. So we're looking for, for ideas and, and ways to, to, to work with you and the students. In general, uh, we hope that you join our conversation. So most of our information is uh, on our website. So ci compass.org, you can go there and, and find uh, all the information that you need. Uh, we also have uh, contact information. Uh, so if you want to email us, or uh, you can email me directly. We would love for you to connect with us 
media. So we have a Twitter account at CI Compass, a LinkedIn page, um, and a YouTube channel where we post our videos and we'll post this webinar as well. And then uh, finally, I just want to um, remind you that we're soliciting topics for the Cyber Infrastructure for MS workshop and uh, uh, IDEA projects. So with that, um, I wanted to, to thank you very much for attending the first uh, webinar, and um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.